I am Xavier Castel and I will speak about my work on sandwich structured composite materials for Wi-Fi antenna application. This work has been carried out in the multifunctional materials team at the Institute of Electronic and Digital Technology, University of Rennes 1 in France. My talk will be divided as you can see. First, I will introduce the context and issue of this study. Then I will speak about the antenna layout the characterization of the carbon fiber tissue and of the composite panel used to fabricate the full composite antenna. At last, I will present the microwave performance of such antenna for Wi-Fi application. Her or C or long carriers need microwave antennas to answer communication with their environments. So many antennas are attached to the surface of their composite panels, such as on this plane or on this mine hunting vessel. Metal sheets will be used as radiating elements directly embedded inside such composite panels, but it will have a strong impact on their mechanical integrity. Some alternatives were investigated to replace the metal by conductive materials suitable with composite materials such as conducting polymers, conducting injects, textiles coated with carbon nanotubes. Our study here concerns the use of carbon fiber tissue as a replacement for metal in view of the fabrication of full composite material antennas in order to preserve the mechanical properties of the composite panels. But what about the macro performance of such antennas? We fabricate a reference counterpart with radiating element, feeding line, and gold plane made of copper sheets all of which embedded it to the same sandwich structures composite panel to compare the performance of both antennas at microwaves. The layout stated here to assess the full composite antenna for Wi-Fi application is a slot-fed patch antenna because it is easy to fabricate with the composite materials. The resetting element is a single square. There is no direct electrical contact between the feeding line of the antenna and its radiating element. The basic framework inspired from a work of POSA with a radiating patch fed by coupling through a slot made in the ground plane. Patch and ground plane were split from each other by an air gap with a control height. Transposed to composite materials, the patch in carbon fiber tissue or copper sheet is set apart from the ground plane here with a slot through on a comb with a control height. On the back side of the ground plane in carbon or copper, there is a feeding line here in carbon or copper too, placed on an LTEX substrate here which feeds the slot and thereby the patch. Each part of the antenna is brought through e-glass fiber and epoxy resin propric tissue here, 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 and here, used as a radom to protect the radiating patch. The size of the patch is set at 35 mm to 35 mm to answer the Wi-Fi operating frequency of the antenna close to 2.5 now, let's move to the electrical and dielectric characterizations. First, the electrical characterization of the carbon fiber tissue with the four probe setup. As expected, the sheet resistance of the carbon fiber tissue is larger than that of the copper sheet, but its value remains satisfactory in view of microwave applications. Electrical conductivity of both samples was computed from the formula here, relating the sheet resistance value, the conductivity, and the sheet thickness. It is worth noting that the ohmic resistance of the radiating element is equal to the sheet resistance of the tissue due to its square shape. It is not the case of the feeding line. The dielectric characteristics, namely the relative permittivity and the loss tangent of the e-glass fiber epoxy resin prepreg and of the honeycomb were performed by the stop perturbation technique at 1 GHz. Those of the Neltex substrate were provided by the supplier also at 1 GHz. As expected, 
the dietary characteristics of the honeycomb are very close to those of the air. Afterwards, the two sandwich structured composite antennas, a full composite antenna with carbon fiber tissue and the reference one with copper sheet, were fabricated by molding propriate tissues. First, two plies of e-glass fiber epoxy propriate were laid on a glass slab. The Neltex substrate with the feed-in line in carbon or copper on one side and the ground plane with the slot on the other side is placed above. Then, two plies of e-glass fiber epoxy propreg, the honeycomb, two other plies of e-glass fiber epoxy propreg, the rejecting patch in carbon fiber tissue or copper sheet cut to the required size, and at last, two plies of e-glass fiber epoxy propreg for radon. Both samples are compacted under vacuum with a plastic bag and cure at 120 degrees for 40 minutes. Here are the pictures of the different layers of the sandwich structured composite antennas in copper and carbon with the feed-in line on the Neltex substrate and the ground plane with the slot. The honeycomb on this, two plies of e-glass fiber epoxy propreg and the rigiding patch in copper or in carbon. And the final sandwich structure composite antennas, the rear side and the front side. Let's move to the microwave performance of such antennas for Wi-Fi application. Both antennas, the reference one and the full composite antenna, exhibit an operating frequency close to the Wi-Fi band, with similar radiating patterns here. As expected, the full composite antenna exhibits lower gain value compared with that of the reference one, mainly due to ohmic loss in the carbon feeding line. Carbon is not a metal. Nevertheless, with a measure gain equal to 3.6 dBi, the full composite antenna is fully operable for Wi-Fi application. In conclusion, the use of carbon fiber tissue as a replacement for meta in view of full composite antennas has been investigated. Relevant microwave performance at 2.5 GHz has been measured, and thus, such full composite antenna is fully operable for Wi-Fi application. Associated with high mechanical strength, lightweight, and corrosion resistance. In closing, I would like to thank very sincerely our financial supports, the European Union, the Ministry of Higher Education and Research, the Brittany Region, the Côte d'Armor Department, and the City of Saint-Brieuc. And you, for your kind attention.